Let me turn and recognize uh, uh, Congressman DeGoose. Thank you, uh, Senator Markey and Representative Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, first and foremost, for your leadership, and it's a pretty exciting moment with respect to uh, the Triple C and, and the real momentum that I think exists here on Capitol Hill and across the country for this concept. Uh, I represent Colorado, as Senator Wyden mentioned, a state that's been deeply impacted by Western wildfires. But we also are home uh, to some of the most magnificent remnants of the Civil Conservation Corps of the 1930s. I had a chance to tour uh, recently. I'm sure some of you are familiar with Red Rocks, the best musical venue in the world. Of course, I represent it, so I'm very biased in that regard. But um, there's a camp, Mount Morrison Camp, where uh, many of these Triple C workers worked and lived. You can still go and see the barracks and the literally the original legislation that President uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed back in 1933, creating the program. And so I, it's hard to think of another program that has I think, captured the imagination of the American people more uh, than the Triple C, uh, obviously 21st century reimagined for uh, the, the new challenges that we face, uh, primarily the existential threat of climate change. So very grateful to all of my partners here on a bicameral basis. We have a bill with Senator Coons uh, as well as a bill with Senator Wyden. And it's just exciting to see so much momentum in that regard. I guess my question would be to you, uh, Mr. Bertone Riggs, following up on the question that Senator Heinrich posed and the point that Senator Markey uh, astutely made around local participation. I, mean, I represent many rural communities, uh, communities that have been devastated by wildfires, and I think there's a premium for us on making sure that local communities benefit from these jobs. And you've mentioned on the contracting piece one example of a way in which we can ensure that that is the case. I don't know if you want to expound a bit further on other ways that we can make sure that rural communities receive the investment that we are speaking of when we talk about the reforestation work and uh, wildlife habitat preservation and, and public lands, deferred maintenance, and so much else. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I, you know, I, I did mention stewardship and result contracting. I think that's a, a critical tool uh, when we see government expenses. It allows for consideration of things like local benefits uh, or potentially even prevailing wage uh, rather than just seeking out the, the lowest cost. Uh, so that's a, that's a critical piece. But my organization works with a number of community-based uh, organizations. These are often very place-specific uh, in very small communities. Uh, they are exactly the sorts of bodies that can host whether we want to think of it as a conservation corps uh, or simply nonprofit work. Uh, those are, are places where we're not just bringing in contractors from somewhere else. Uh, it's really a local workforce and, and local members of the community. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I think investment in uh, nonprofits is, is certainly a way to do this. And, and one consideration, given the, uh, the level of crisis about this, is to consider waiving what are at times onerous matching requirements uh, for federal projects. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Senator 